as a freelance writer, you're being hired for one thing and one thing only, and that is not to write content or copy. Your clients are hiring you to improve a certain aspect of their business, a certain metric, through content or copy. That could be the number of impressions, so the number of eyes on content. It could be the number of sales made through a sales page. It could be the engagement through an email sequence, whatever. But what they're looking for is an improvement in a specific metric, which will differ from client to client, project to project, uh, but generally it's always related to their bottom line. They're hiring you to improve that key metric through your ability to craft something uh, with words. For most of us, and most freelance writers, we focus on sort of blog content because there's just such an abundance out there. Um, problem is, a lot of blog content is pretty crap. And it loses people within the first couple of paragraphs. And that is, one, it's pretty obvious from the statistics I'm about to show you, but it's also incredibly important to fix this because as you'll see now as I share my iPad screen 57% of people never scroll past the fold a further 17% just get a little bit get one further screen down if you're not aware the fold is when you see a piece of content now on a desktop it is that first screen so often that's just the title and the first couple of lines of the piece uh, people don't even scroll past that They'll read those first few lines, make a judgment on whether this is the right article for them, it's going to help them solve their problem, and then if it they don't think it will, they're going to go back. So, you know, they search for something on Google, click through to this article that you've written. If those first few lines don't wow them, they're going to go back to Google and click through to the next one. If you can write a better opening and help people understand that your content is the perfect solution to their problem, you're going to see that bounce rate go down. You're going to see much happier clients. Well, I mean, you're going to see everything get a bit better. Um, so I'm going to go through a formula, which I recently discovered. It's something that you kind of pick up and you notice in a lot of places, but somebody called um, Chris and Wilpert from Content Mavericks and does a lot of work with the um, Sumo team pointed out in one of his articles, I'll link it down below, and he called this the CDS formula, which was call out description solution. So in the first few lines, you basically call out your target audience, you describe their problem, and then you offer the solution in those first few lines so that somebody reads on the fold, oh my God, that's me, that's the problem I'm having, these guys have got the solution, I wanna read the rest. L drastically lowers the bounce rate and uh, increases their scroll. But anyway, oh God, the button's at the top. So here we go. I'm going to, first of all, we're going to start and look at what is a very typical piece of content. I have redacted the author's name for their own benefit. But this is what so much content on the internet has come to. It's, you know, this is about um, social media marketing tips was the piece. And I haven't included any more because of the screenshot because I didn't want people to go and find this. Uh, it's no secret that in today's digital world, the best way to reach your target audience is online. That is a non-sentence. That doesn't tell me anything already on board. This makes social media one of the most powerful tools you have in your marketing arsenal, and it can benefit your site in more ways than one. This is too basic. If I'm looking for, um, I think it was the search for social media tips to increase conversions, or something generic like that, I already know what social media is. I already know how beneficial it is to my business. What I'm looking to do is to optimize my processes to make more sales through social. This this doesn't help me. This Already I feel like this is too basic for the search that I've conducted, so I'm going to go back. Problem is, is that it persists with this very vague, very general, very basic approach to writing. If you look at the, the, the subheading, The Power of Social Media Marketing, by now you're probably aware of just how useful social media can be. If I wasn't, I wouldn't be reading this. I'm, already, I'm looking for tips on how to make my social media better. This author has done no research into the audience. They've taken no steps to write something that is particular for them, for that particular audience. It, it's it's lazy at the, the end of the day, and it's not going to inspire anybody to read more or take action. Now, if we go back, I have three pieces here that show this perfectly. I'm going to start off with the one that Chris uh, put in as an example in the article that I will link to. Load, 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 come on. And I will show you exactly what he's done here. So we're going to draw. Um, 
one, two. And if you actually manage to see the piece that Chris writes, you'll know that I am kind of ripping this off for this particular one here. Three. So what you have is here, you have the call out. Here is the description of their problem. And here is the solution. All right. If you're like most content marketers, boom. If I'm a content marketer, I know like, hey, I'm a content marketer. Maybe this is for me. The description, you publish a piece of content, promote the link everywhere you can think of, move on to the next piece of content after a week. It's kind of what I do. It's a description of my day-to-day -day life or the problem that I'm having, whatever. What you're left with is something but a big spike of hope pictured left. And then what he's done here is very smart because on the left-hand side is <laughs> what many content marketers will know as the sort of thing, you know, you publish something and then that happens. And then he's shown what he has achieved with his content distribution strategy, the content dist uh, content distribution strategy that 10x my traffic in 60 days. So it's called about, it's got a description of the problem, and then he's provided the solution. And he's just sort of on this left hand side here. This is tying into that description and really making you think like, ah, oh, shit, I really hate that that happens to me. This is exactly what happens. It's perfect. CDS, call out description, solution. Uh, you don't always want to be so direct with the CDS though. You don't want to be like, you can't write every piece of content saying, if you're a freelance writer, if you're a business owner, if you're a, you can't keep doing that. So I've got a couple of other good uh, examples here. One is from Alex Burkett. We'll go to Alex first. There we go. Right. So again, this isn't directed at a particular person. It's not like, hey, if you like most content marketers. But this one here, you've got the content marketing strategy is something few companies do well. As a content marketer, I'd be like, well, my company, do we do it well or do we not? Um, Alex mixes it up a bit. Hmm. He kind of mixes the call out and the description of the problem into that first line. Content marketing strategy is something few companies do well. Immediately, I know that this is for content marketers, especially because of the title. The title's going to draw you in. Um, and I know that the description, the problem, is that few companies do it well. But then he gets straight into a bit of building of his own reputation, a bit of proof. Uh, it's something that he's focused on. He is most because all the companies I work for are the super early stage startups to HubSpot, where I work now. I was sort of dropping a big name in there, as in like, you know, Alex does work on the growth team for HubSpot. I think he's like a senior growth manager. So he knows what he's talking about, dropping their name in, smart choice. Um, again, he kind of builds out that he has the solution here. Though all of them successful. Uh, and then he goes in, so he kind of mixes it up a bit. He goes for the description afterwards. Most blog posts on content marketing strategy focus on what are assuredly tactical considerations. So let's change the color of this. I should have color coded all this before and we'll go blue. Blue will now be the uh, description. There we go. Highlighting skills need improvement. Um, and again, he continues that here. Uh, comes from one direction of the company, giving it a, if something works for Microsoft, that doesn't mean it works for startup and vice versa. So that's kind of a description. That's what a lot of companies do. If you're doing the content marketing strategy and it's something few companies do well and you're just copying what another company does he's basically calling you out and saying crap he's just mixed it up a bit but it's still here's the call out for content marketers here is the description of what they're doing wrong here's a little bit of a solution it's not really a solution but it's a hint of a solution either way above the fold you've got everything that you need to know who this is for, is this for me? Yet yeah, there's a little bit there to exacerbate and to sort of agitate the problems and the, the actions that I'm taking. And then there's a bit of a solution in there, um, which is great. The final one that I want to look at is from Conversion Excel and um, Chanel. I think right this, yeah, there you go. Um, so she's gone with, again, right, let's try and get these color codings right. So we got, we'll go yellow. What was yellow for in Alex's? A solution so we will go for the call out as an e-commerce site boom straight away 
Um, there we go. And a little bit of the description. You likely send emails regularly. Uh, Friday emails. <laughs> yeah, that's what we do. Um, are you getting real results or simply opens and clicks? So again, that we've got red as the call out for e-commerce site owners. Oh yeah, the description of one, we send this. Where's the rest of this? Why is it? It's only done one page. That's going to be annoying. Um, a hint of the solution, that they have the solution. Are you promoting the right products, the right people at the right time? So basically, in those first two lines, I know to see, I know who this is for. I know that this is the problem that those people will be experiencing. And I know that this is the solution that I'm going to find out. Are you promoting the right products to the right people at the right time? Obviously, they're going to go in and explain to me how I can fix that. And that's the solution that they're going to present. CDS, first two little paragraphs. I know immediately that this is for me and it's going to massively increase the number of people who scroll past that initial view further down. All credit for the actual formula here goes to uh, Chris and I'll link to his piece there. In the bit below this video you'll also find a link to the Google Drive where all of these three, four, the, the bad one included, files are kept with these little notes on they're not particularly comprehensive notes, but they do show you what this is about. Um, so yeah, and I'm gonna put all of that in the video stuff and I'll drop a link again in the Google Drive to the to the piece where Chris mentioned this as a formula. It's definitely something that you should do if you write any sort of blog content, CDS, mix it up at the start. You're trying to just tell people basically in the first sentence, grab their attention so that they can read onto the second sentence to build some more interest to them to the third sentence by that point you should have hooked them enough to get that bit of a scroll down to the second screen uh, any questions let me know